You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again. And today, we have a another guest on the show. Today, we have Melissa Caprio, and she is an author, photographer, and radio host, and she is also a creator of uh, Postcards to the Universe. She has a podcast that you can check out as well. It's Postcards to the Universe with Melissa. We're going to learn a little bit about her today. Today's topic, though, is using creativity in powerful ways. So without further ado, I want to welcome Melissa. How you doing? Hi, thanks so much for having me today. I'm excited to talk to you. I love talking about creativity. I appreciate that. So, yeah, thanks for your time. For the audience, kind of tell us a little bit about uh, your background, because like I said in the intro, you're an uh, author, photographer, and also a radio host, and podcast host. So kind of share with us a little bit about your background. Sure. So um, I originally went to school, and I got my fine art degree in photography and I was doing a lot of um, art photography and then I did a little bit of commercial photography for a while and I uh, worked um, with the special needs population. I was photographing them a lot and uh, the way postcards came about was I just had this, I learned about, you know, like manifestation and bringing more abundance in our lives and I really like interests me and I found out more about that and about how using our creativity to kind of manifest the things we want um, was kind of like uh, super interesting. I'm like, okay, so how can I use photography and how can I use my creativity to sort of tap into that creative energy to bring in more of those things that I want in my life. And that's sort of the, the quick version of how Postcards to the Universe was created. And Postcards is, um, it's kind of like making a mini, uh, it, it's a mini vision board, really. So people who know about vision boards, a lot of times in the new year, people make them, you know, they put all the, the images of what they want to bring into their life on their board. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be really cool to have people make a postcard about whatever it is they want to bring into their life? You know, it could be new relationship, change your job, change your location, you know, get better, get healthy, whatever it was, and make a manifesting postcard and then send it to me and then let me photograph it the way that I want to photograph it, like my interpretation of it. And when their manifestation like becomes their reality, they can share their story with me if they want. And uh, we could talk about how that came about. And that's what the book is. So the book, Postcards to the Universe, Harness the Universe's Power and Manifest Your Dreams, is 30 postcards with 30 manifesting stories. And all, you know, the main areas, love, relationships, career, money, health, you know, abundance. So that's what the book is about. And those people shared were kind enough to allow me to share their postcard and their story about after they created their postcard, what showed up in their life. And that's what um, my whole project is about. So I'm always asking for manifesting postcards and I want people to send them to me and I want people to share my story, their stories with me. And a lot of times I talk about that on my radio show and, and which is every week it's called Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, Creating the Life You Crave. And it's also a podcast. So what I do is I take the live radio show and then I put it up on the podcast. So that's like the short version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot more to it, but I'm trying, you know, for purposes of the podcast and time, trying to make it concise and short. And people can go visit your website, uh, postcards to the universe dot com. And when you kind of start this thing, kind of walk the audience through the whole process of creating a postcard, and you know how you you know create postcard to the universe, the universe, and how that whole process works from uh, the idea to the finished product. Oh God. So, so the idea came out of pain, <laughs> which a lot of ideas come out of pain, right? So I was, uh, living 
in the Florida Keys, and I was married at the time, and I was photographing dolphin assisted therapy, and I loved that job. It was so great, and the job was just kind of ending. They were leaving the Keys, so the job was ending, and at the same time, uh, so so was the relationship. The relationship was ending, and so I was like, oh, man, you know, everything kind of hit me at once, and. I also decided to leave and move. So literally within like a 30 day period, like I left the job, the marriage and the house that I had. So that's a lot, right? In in a very short period of time. So I was very stressed out and in a lot of emotional pain, you know, because not only was the relationship ending, which everybody knows, you know, relationships when they end is painful, but the job that I loved so much, my career was changing and I loved it so much. So that had its own level of pain, you know, ending that because it was such a nourishing and enriching job. So I moved uh, back to my hometown um, where I grew up, where I had all my family and friends. And I was kind of fluttering around for a while doing commercial photography and, you know, like, what do I want to do? And this isn't, this isn't enriching my life and I don't want to do this kind of work anymore. I don't know what I want. And I, that's when I learned about um, the law of attraction, which basically means that we attract uh, things into our lives where our energy is. We match, you know, we bring in a lot of, we're like co-creators with the universe, you know? So I'm like, okay, well, I didn't realize that part of this I was manifesting into my life. Um, why am I doing that? And I discovered, you know, the reasons I attracted this kind of person and all that kind of stuff. But I thought, hmm, well, that means that I can become uh, empowered by this knowledge and I could start being a conscious co-creator with the universe. So as I was studying this and listening to a lot of authors and, um, going to workshops and, you know, really kind of doing a lot of inner work. Uh, one night I, I was falling asleep and I've told this story. I think I told it in the book too. And I've told it on many podcasts um, that I've been on. I heard in my mind very clearly postcards to the universe. And I was like, I knew it was important, but I didn't know why at the time it was important, but I just felt like it was like downloaded, like I downloaded it, it came to me. So I got up, it was like one in the morning and I went to GoDaddy and I bought the domain name and I thought, okay, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I feel like it's important. And, um, you know, all these synchronicities happened after that, about a year later, I started meeting all these people that kind of took me to the next step because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted postcards to be. I just knew that I wanted people to, um, uh, handwrite maybe messages and somehow how was I going to use photography and what was I going to do with it and I just kept meeting the right people that sort of guided me in the right direction and then I created a website and realized that I was going to offer I was doing a lot of workshops back then um, just going to start getting back into it here shortly since COVID I stopped doing them but I'm going to get back into I'm teaching people how to create a manifesting postcard. And then I want to photograph them and I put them on my social media and I talk about affirmations all the time. And from there, the book came about. I got an opportunity to uh, write and I decided I wanted to do a book and I did it. And, and I got it published by a traditional publisher, which was pretty cool because it's not an easy <laughs> a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so I did that. And then the radio show kind of just fell in my lap. I met um, a friend of mine was doing one. And I thought, hmm, you know, that sounds kind of cool. Maybe I could uh, try this radio thing. And I wrote the producers and introduced myself and they really liked what I was doing. And they said, yeah, we'd love to have you. So it was just kind of like a Next step to also make it a podcast, you know, because it is a live radio show. So that and it gets replayed and stuff. But I also wanted to put it up as a podcast so it could go out to greater audiences. And I meet the most interesting people doing very interesting things because of the show, which I love. So that's sort of it in a nutshell. We're talking to our guest today, Melissa Caprioli. Go to her website, postcards to the universe.com. 
And also you can find a book there as well. And I'm sure you can get on Amazon as well. So with the topic, using creativity in powerful ways, I mean, you're doing it. You, you named it from books, radio shows, podcasts, uh, episodes. When a creative uses their talent to, you know, it, you're like a walking brand. You're using it to show it off to people who who catches it and, and recognizes your brand. Based on your own experience, how have you learned how to fine-tune your image as far as your brand goes? Um, yeah, so that is uh, has been my biggest challenge. Um, being clear and concise about what the brand is and also getting marketing. Like marketing is not my favorite thing to do, right? A lot of us don't like it, especially as creatives. We like to be creative, get into that energy, but then we're like, okay, well, now we have to put it out there. So uh, one of the ways that I found worked for me um, finding experts to help guide me. Now, whether that's a uh, career coach, whether that's a marketer, a PR person, um, an editor, if you're writing, a publisher, if you want to get your book out there, finding those people to help you that can tap into their expertise to guide you into the next step. Because a lot of us, when we're doing creative things, you know, we wear all the hats. And I still wear pretty much 90% of all the hats, but I do always look to ask for guidance in other, where, where other people are experts and I'm not. And um, I have found that's really helped me because sometimes when we're super attached to whatever it is we're working on, whether it's a book or your or your painter, or your your paintings or your photographer, your photographs, your music, your screenplays, whatever it is you're doing, we're very emotionally attached to it, you know. So we may need another outside person's perspective that can maybe give us an idea that we wouldn't have thought of or maybe say, oh, you know, this is too confusing. I don't really understand what you're doing. So maybe if you simplify this. And so that I found has really helped me over the years because now it's been many years since I had the original idea and to where it is today, it's, it flows much better. You know, like I have my system down and I'm just kind of in the flow now where I can be more in that creative spirit. You're also a photographer, so that's mm -hmm. creativity as well. How have you been using your art as a photographer? Yeah, so what I did, my photography has changed quite a bit. Uh, I don't really do too much commercial work anymore. So what I do is... Um, I receive the postcards and it's basically I'm using photography to photograph the postcards. So I receive a postcard and I'll look at it and see whatever the person created because it's really important to them what they created, right? Like if they're sending me something and they want to bring in, you know, a new relationship, let's say, you know, a new love interest or they want to get married or they want to change their careers. They're putting all their creative energy into what they sent me, you know, or they made it in a workshop, but lately it's been what they've sent me in the mail. <clears throat> so I take it and I kind of meditate with it. You know, I, I look at it and I think about it and I let the creative spark kind of overtake me and I'll take the image and I will set it up in um in a studio space because now I do it from in a studio I was I used to take them with me when I would travel and go places and photograph them and like if I felt inspired somewhere uh out but since COVID and everything kind of shut down I sort of had to change the way I was doing that and I really I, I find things that represent um something that has to do with their postcard or something that has to, that makes sense to me in a conceptual way. So I want to make the whole photograph beautiful and their affirmation and their energy is in my work. Also, it's like a collaboration because 
it's somebody else's card that I'm taking and that I'm photographing in my interpretation. And I have a lot of uh, things that I collect, you know, in my travels and in my life. And I utilize those other things in the postcard to sort of tell a story in one image. And that's how I've been using my photography probably the last since 2020. I would say since COVID, really. Yeah. And with that said, you said a key word that I thought was pretty interesting, and that's the word collaboration. Um, I think that is something that really can be useful to anyone that is a creative and trying to push, you know, whatever they are trying to pursue. How have you used uh, collaboration with people who submit those vision uh, postcards to you to kind of leverage the growth of your of your momentum of your brand to advertise to others yeah so um when people submit a postcard i tell them to um contact me you know uh when their postcard manifests into their reality right so someone will submit and I'll hear from them at another date and they'll say something like, oh, you'll never believe what happened. You know, I created this postcard and then blah, blah, blah. All of this came true. And I'll say, is it okay? Do you want to share your story? And, and most, I would say everybody said, I can't even think of anybody who said, no, I had one person that wanted to stay anonymous, um, but in the book, but everybody said, yes. So so once they share their story, I share the image along with their story. Now, weekly, I post a, and I call them my magical messages, and I post an affirmation. So I take the postcard and I make the image and I share those weekly. But I don't put the person's name associated with it until that person tells me that yes, when they're ready to tell their story. And then I will say, this is stuff I just post on my social media. Um, and then I'll say, okay, let's post about you. Let's do about your bio. Let's tell your story as long as you're giving me permission that that goes with that person's name. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it does. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> now, when you look at your different platforms, like I said, mm-hmm. from you being an author, being published, you have that experience. Having on radio show, have that experience. You're photographer, established photographer at that. I mean, looking back, what, is there anything that you would change now? Or would you share with the audience? Like, how, how do you kind of reflect so that where you always are pushing yourself to go to the next level with your goals versus like settling, you know what I'm saying? That makes sense. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So if I go back and I think about um, my own process, I would say that realizing now, like maybe I didn't realize it then, obviously I didn't. I, I Sometimes you think you're ready for something before you're actually ready for it. So I had a lot of, uh, uh, I was very impatient, right? Early on. Like I wanted like, (laughs) like it to be kind of where it is now back way before I was ready to handle it all. So I think that just being patient um, and trusting the process is really important and making sure that you learn early what isn't working and get rid of it you know instead of trying to like be the dead horse you know like certain things we have an idea of how we want it to be and we'll hold on to things and we'll get nothing but resistance nothing but resistance and and you have to start to say "Hmm, maybe this isn't working for me and let those things go instead of trying to hold on to them and just being open to yourself changing the work changing where it's going changing like when i first started writing and i had the book i had this idea of what it was going to be like and 
it was very different than the actual experience. And I'm not saying the experience wasn't good. It, it's, it was good and it still continues to be good. But I'm thinking that the podcast and the radio show was going to be so much on a smaller scale. And what's happened is, is yes, the book, I talk about my book every week and the book sales, you know, the book is selling and, and that's wonderful. And I've, and I've completed my first draft of my second book. I need to go back and do the second draft of that. But the podcast and the radio show has opened up so much more to me than I ever thought that it that it would and I'm meeting like the most interesting people and that's taken me on different directions which I had no idea would happen so I think just being open to those kind of things and not and not holding on to things that aren't working because sometimes we we do that especially if we've worked really hard at something and we're like oh you know, I can't just give this part of it up. Sometimes you have to. And that opens up the space for the new things that are meant for you to come in. You know, there's a refocus radio talking to our guest, Melissa Caprio. And yeah, I think had made a good point about there's a time to let go and a time to uh, go after certain things. And I think a creative or someone who learns to be more creative that's how you really create those powerful moments because you have to do something about it and you have to sometimes shut things down, you know, in order for something else to grow. Mm-hmm. And Definitely. When you see the growth of what you're doing, someone who's listening and they want to start something, whether it's, you know, they want to pursue a business or a podcast show or, you know, sports or doctor, lawyer, whatever it is, whatever it is that they want to do. How would you uh, suggest that that they kind of reflect on, you know, their talents and their gifts in order for them to have the most impact with their creativity? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's very important that you prioritize what it is you want, whatever it is. Um, You may have to be working, uh, raising a family and doing other things, you know, to pay your bills and take care of your kids, your spouses, whatever. You may still have those responsibilities. That's fine. You know, you need to do what you need to do. But if there's something that you want that you're passionate about, you have to prioritize that time for yourself somewhere in your daily life even if it's 30 minutes a day find that time to um you know if it's writing to write if it's studying to change your career in the in the in like if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or you know something an engineer but you're working somewhere else you need to spend that time prioritizing and giving yourself time to do that if it's being an artist You know, you could dream about being a painter, you know, all day, every day, but it doesn't mean anything if you're not actually painting, right? So you have to make yourself a priority. And I don't mean that being selfishly. I mean that you need to do that because when you do that, you're going to become inspired. And when you become inspired by your own life, so many more doors open up to you. And you're so much, you're filled with so much more joy and happiness because you're nourishing whatever that is for you inside of yourself. And you're better to all those other people that you also want to serve in your life, your family and your friends and all those other people because a happier, everybody likes being around people that are happy, right? Nobody wants to be around somebody who's miserable all the time. So you're, you're, it's such a, it's such a gift that you're giving to yourself, but you're also giving to the people that love you and that you love because you're nourishing yourself. So don't forget to do that because we can make a million excuses. Like there's only, you know, 24 hours in a day and I'm, you know, and, and how many of those can I be productive? I have to sleep. I have to take care of my kids. I have to do this. Yes, that's true. You do, but you can find a little slot of time for yourself every day to 
take one step, do one thing toward whatever it is that feeds your soul, that, that, you know, brings you joy, that you love. Yeah, it's like self-maintenance. And mm-hmm. what I would say sometimes on the show is like, you have to choose a target before you aim. Because yeah. if you aim, <laughs> but you don't see no target in front of you, then you're basically just aiming nowhere because you have to first decide. So whatever your plan is, you decide, you commit to it, and you grow from there. Because you will come across points where you got to make adjustments. But if you know your foundation, right, you mm-hmm. know your talents and your gifts, then stay hold to those talents and gifts and find ways to sharpen it. Because if you don't <laughs> pursue, then you settle. Mm-hmm. So if you don't go for it, then you settle. Yep. That's true. And, you know, you want to get to, you know, the end of your life. You don't want to look back and regret, well, I should have tried. Because at least, you know, if you tried and you did the best you could, you got to enjoy it in the meantime, right? Like, because there's joy in, there's joy in working towards that goal. That's why if you hear those stories when people finally get what they want and then they're like, oh man, this is great. But now what? Now I got to what I got, what I want. And, you know, what do I do from here? Right. So there's so much joy in the building of the blocks of whatever that desire is, you know, and we forget to be in the moment, be in the moment and enjoy the building of whatever it is you're building in your life. Like, don't forget that part of it. You've been listening to Army Focus Radio talking to our guest today, Melissa Caprio. You can go to her website, uh, postcards to the universe.com. And if people want to keep in touch with you, I know you have another website with your first and last name, but what's the best way people can stay in touch? Yeah, postcards to the universe.com. You can connect to any of my anything from there. You can email me from my website. My book's on there. The podcast is on there. A link to the live radio show is on there. All my social media, everything is under postcards to the universe. So, um, yeah, if you want to email me, you can go right to my website, email me through there. You can follow me on Instagram. I'm on uh, uh, Instagram. I'm on um, now. Um, what's the new one? I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on like all of them, right? So um, you can find me anyway and just email me if you have any questions. If you want to make a manifesting postcard, I would love it. Uh, you can find out how to do it on my website and where to send it. Just shoot me an email. Let me know that it's on it's on its way so i look out for it i also have a personal photography website which is melissacaprio.com so you can find me on there too i'll leave the uh, last thought with the audience use your creativity for amazing things because you know we all need your gifts and talents so with that said i want to say thank you melissa caprio for taking time talking to us today Thank you so much. It was so great to talk to you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you.